I can eat nonstop. That is one of my favorite things. Uh, yep. I've definitely been here. Yep. Uh, my nine to five is just a few blocks over. Oh, wow. So That's I've great. definitely come over here for some shrimp and grits and stuff like that for oh, lunch. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are a man of many things. Definitely have a lot of things going on. Um, what kind of made you want to start Best Boys and Poets? What made me want to start mm -hmm. Best Boys and Poets? Um, you know, I've always lived in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of my life, over 50 years, mm -hmm. I've lived here. Um, it's a, a city that I've always loved, and I love its culture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I wanted a place that has a, so become a cultural center for mm -hmm. the city that represents all elements of the city, the politics, the race, the um, literary parts of the city, the artistic parts of the city, mm -hmm. all of that, you know, kind of under one roof. I, I'm, I'm one that when I go out, I don't like going to multiple places. I like to go out and just stay there because mm -hmm. parking is such a hassle. <laughs> parking <laughs> was, is the biggest Uber. issue. Uber has made life very different. But, they have. But, but, that wasn't always around. Exactly. That wasn't always there, right? <laughs> so so I, I always wanted to go to a place where I can like have a nice dinner, mm -hmm. enjoy a show, talk to people, browse in a bookstore, like mm -hmm. all, kind of everything kind of in one, you know? Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be nice to do that, you know? So I started, you know, developing that idea for Busboys and Poets in, uh, you know, 2003 or so we started that. And then, uh, you know, the idea grew and it turned out like I it wasn't the only one. It served you well. I, I wasn't the only one that liked it, you know, <laughs> so that's good. You, you know, sometimes you come up with these ideas and you mm -hmm. think, you know, maybe other people will like this too. I hope so. You cross your fingers. But then when you have a lot of people that like it, then you're really excited because mm -hmm. you feel like you, maybe uh, I'm not alone in this. Yeah. And, and now that you've grown so much, so how do you decide where your next home is going to be? I know, you know, home is, I'm sure, always down yeah. on U Street. Yeah. But how do you decide what's a good fit for your establishment? Uh, you mean like, like location-wise? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I... I always like edgy areas. I always okay. like areas that are um, uh, that are very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, I like areas that have, um, you know, different crisscross of, of society, mm -hmm. of community. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to go in areas that are exclusive one or the other uh, because I think it tends to uh, take away some of the energy that I mm -hmm. think is necessary for, for us as human beings to interact mm -hmm. with one another, especially in a city like this. So, I, so, so I look for places that mm -hmm. are kind of not... Uh, on the edge, and mm -hmm. I think it's important for areas like that to kind of we become kind of a, um, a marker, mm -hmm. uh, sort of a uh, like a flag for mm -hmm. the community. You are, you're definitely a landmark for yeah, the community. Yeah, but so for I sure. think it, it, you know, so we speak to the idea that we become a, a, a magnet, even if the community changes, mm -hmm. uh, we still become a magnet for people to come back to. I love that. So how do you determine what books you're going to have in the bookstore? I always well, browse the books while I'm waiting, you know, for uh, someone who's joining me for a meal. Yeah. I, I'm always drawn to it. Well, the, the bookstore is an important part of what we do. Mm -hmm. So so the bookstore is to, uh, is we want to make sure that the books that we have are books that are representative mm -hmm. of the issues that we like to promote mm -hmm. in this place, issues of social justice and issues of peace. And also, we have one of the highest uh, number of books of people of color. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in most bookstores, you know, you have, uh, you know, 90% of the books are white people mm -hmm. and 10% are people of color. Mm -hmm. we, we tend to kind of try to reverse that at some level. Uh, have a lot of books, people of color, and less books of more kind of mainstream books mm -hmm. uh, that you can find pretty much anywhere. Okay. Kind of like promoting really a, a, a socially conscious agenda. I love that. I was peeping at the, uh, the I'm Judging You book by Lovey uh, downstairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've read that one. That's definitely a good uh, one. So when a customer comes through your doors, what kind of experience do you kind of imagine them to have or that you want them to have? What do you want them to kind of take away from their experience? I mean, number one, I want them to feel uplifted. I want them to okay. feel a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. Like they don't feel like they have to... Um, act a certain way or be a certain way or, or okay. you know feel like they have to leave part of themselves outside mm -hmm. of here you know so for a lot of folks that, that come in here and I think uh, many of us that we go to places uh, sometimes uh, you feel out of place you feel like mm -hmm. yeah I don't see anybody looks like me right here right or you know I feel like they're looking at me differently mm -hmm. or they're treating me a little differently or they're sitting in an area that's a little different. They, uh, what, mm -hmm. That may not be the intention, but right. I'm saying, you know, but it you, definitely happens. Yeah, you you you, you keep questioning that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that kind of energy. Like that wears you out. 
you know, it really does wear you out, even if it's not true. You right. Know, just thinking it wears mm -hmm. you out, right? So I wanted a place where you don't have to think like that. Just okay. walk in and relax. And just be yourself mm -hmm. instead of being so guarded and so, like, uncomfortable and so, you know... See how they treated them? They didn't mm -hmm. treat us like that. Way. Right, yes. You know, I don't I don't want that energy to come through. I want I want you to think like if you're not being treated well, it's mm -hmm. because the way they're fucked up. You right. Know? <laughs> it's like, you know, that's all. It's you know? an isolated incident. Yeah, it's an isolated incident. It's not about establish. you, it's right. about this waiter who just couldn't get Maybe they're having together. a bad day. They had a bad or... day. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, that's a special feeling. <laughs> Believe it, it, it is, though, but it's, it's a very real feeling. Yeah. Um, I think. It would be nice if a lot of other establishments kind of thought yeah, about that yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I have had a variety of things off the menu. Do you have a favorite? You know, I I like actually most food here. Mm -hmm. If I ate as much as I like to eat, I'd be like <laughs> four times my size. Uh, so I really have to control. My... <laughs> control yourself. I eat a lot. I really do. <laughs> Look, I believe that eating is food for the soul, for a it good day, totally, for a bad absolutely. day. Food to me for... is like wow. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> I know this sounds oh like God. a problem. That but, is but, awesome. But no, I, I like all food. It's I really such do. a kindred spirit. I totally love it. <laughs> but I, I like, uh, I kind of purposely uh, mm -hmm. not try to eat the same thing over and over again. Okay. Just because I think uh, my job is to be kind of quality control, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so I don't kind of get stuck in one dish. I try different dishes. And, and lo and behold, every now and then I'll run into something and say, you know what, that's not quite like, right. uh -huh. let's get rid of the menu. Let's change it. Let's do something. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I hit the mark right. So, so that's, I have to keep it. So fresh. how do you decide? What do you want on your menu? You know, we, we, we listen to our community a okay. lot. Uh, so people make recommendations mm -hmm. sometimes. I think we also want to move people toward a healthier lifestyle okay. and healthier eating style. Mm -hmm. So we, we'll have the great stuff that people are just used to. Like the shrimp and grits. Like the shrimp you and grits. You can never get yeah, rid of them. You can't get rid of shrimp and grits. You know? um, and that's an indulgence, people, and mm -hmm. I know that. And sometimes we need those. Uh, but we also want to give options for people who want to eat here every day and every mm -hmm. other day or whatever to kind of uh, you know, mix it up a little bit and, and, and try a vegan dish if they've never tried vegan mm -hmm. food. Uh, and be surprised at how good it is, you know? <laughs> Definitely but, surprised. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, vegan food, you know, when you think of vegan, you think like, you know, cardboard and... and Not flavorful. Green, you know? Yes. Nothing, but, but, you know, we can make vegan food really tasty. And when vegan food is really tasty, and, you know, if somebody wants to move in that direction, it doesn't have to be a, a, like they're giving up so much of their, you know... <laughs> right. Of their uh, joy, you know? I want them to enjoy vegan food and, and still... Uh, you know, have to do go to, to be in food and still enjoy it. You know, it's, that's always been my gauge. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to eat anything that I, feels like medicine. You know, <laughs> okay. I, I, you know, like if, if I'm gonna eat, if I'm gonna eat be eating, uh, eating meat, uh, vegan mm -hmm. food, I want it to be tasty. Right. I don't want it to be like, ugh, I'm giving up something.